damn, that's dope. <laughs> what up, I everybody? That, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, this is uh, my first show. It's uh, welcome to open the gates. On the show, we basically, um, basically, it's a threshold into the world of creators. And uh, on this show, um, we have Brian Kreisgau. I'm your host, Matt Burke. And uh, say what up to, say what up to the chat, uh, Brian, and everybody. Say what up to Brian. What up, chat? What up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Sweet. So, Brian, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. I mean, for all those that don't know who you are, that may be okay. watching. All right. I am the critically acclaimed, the critically acclaimed, award-winning creator of Six Gun Gorilla, Long Days of Vengeance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but by the way, I love saying that I'm award, an award winner. It's like yeah. some stupid award I won for writing, like, when I was in uh, at university. <laughs> Right, but when yeah. I just say award-winning, you just like your imagination fills in the blank. You know what I mean? You don't know what award that could be. It could be something really dope. The major um, award. It's oh yeah, the award I got was the Portia Dunham Award for Fiction. Very prestigious. Very prestigious. Everybody knows that one, right? Right. And uh, I, although I can't honestly say critically acclaimed, uh, because um, everybody seems to uh, seems to like the book. I've been doing it now uh, for. About yeah, about what eight eight years, and uh, just uh, released the eighth issue, and it hasn't been like an issue a year. It's been like you know a couple issues, and then I've been like sort of releasing it sporadically because, of course, I'm an indie comics guy, and you have to get the funds in order right. to be able to do this. And then you know we don't make a lot of money off these books, so then pretty much all the dough that we do make goes into like the next project and uh well i mean it it, it uh it it uh it, it takes time but what can i say i i am super happy and super lucky that uh that people uh love my writing and then i actually have people hiring me to write for them now that blows my mind Sweet. right <laughs> that's you know so like the the imposter syndrome kicks in i'm just like I'm just like waiting for someone to like notice I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> any, any, uh, any spoilery, uh, spoilerific um, projects you might be working on that you could maybe maybe tell us about? Oh, uh, and if not, that's cool too. I mean, I'm just oh I'm well, just... well, yeah. I mean, next year is going to be interesting. Next year is going to be interesting because there's going to be uh, uh, the uh, Blood Hunt Doc Salem crossover, which uh, I'm doing with my friends uh, Sim Simon Poitier. That's sexy Quebecois. And uh, the oh, yeah. equally equally as sexy uh, Preston uh, Acevedo, although he's oh. married, lady, so don't get any ideas. <laughs> um, and that's gonna be a that that's gonna be a real thrill. I mean, I've already, I already wrote the script; it's just a matter of them illustrating it. But that's gonna happen next year, it looks like, hopefully. Uh, and uh, then I wrote uh, Nine Devils, which is going to be a big project mm -hmm. for Preston, uh, which he's planning on not illustrating but painting. Ooh, and wow. that's going to have like post-apocalyptic uh, motorcycle gangs, uh, 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 demons and uh, angels and wow. <laughs> uh, zeppelins and all kinds of crazy shit in it, you know? And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then there's uh, a book uh, that, that I wrote under the title of Abraxas that's going mm -hmm. to be uh, illustrated. It looks by um, uh, Maxi Diallo. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, Adam the yeah. And he also did the, um, the, uh, what is it? The, uh, still cowboy book. He did uh, that. Jack irons. I, I backed that book, man. I can't, Jack I can't irons. Yeah. And yeah, which is, which is, which is terrific. And also he illustrated the story that I wrote for the kill journal. I remember that. No, oh, that book was excellent, and, bro. Let yeah. me see. Do I have that right here? I think I do. I may have to knock Robocop over in order to get dun, it dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh wait this one actually has a battery in it <laughs> i think i had oh what the is a jetpack so it's like you can hear him <laughs> that's pretty awesome dude <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah um adam was kind enough to uh throw your boy a bone and uh, give allow me the privilege of uh, of writing a story, an origin story for um, one of the characters in the Kill Journal. 
and uh, Maxi just killed it. I mean, did such a beautiful job, and also did what you what you really really uh, look forward to uh, in a book, which is uh, adding details that you that weren't in your script, but that take your story take the story to another level, right? Hell yeah, man! Yeah, I love that. I love his yeah. style. It reminds me of um a little bit of uh um I forgot his name, man. The guy that did Rumble, um James oh. Heron. It reminds me of James Heron a little bit, and a uh, little bit of um Donald Delay a little bit. Yeah. Some of his stuff. I know Absolutely. Donald's a chameleon, an art an artistic chameleon, but yeah, I love that. Good well, stuff, well, Adam was looking for an artist, mm. and I was like, dude, why don't you just get Maxi? Mm. Because he killed it. Right. With that, with that with that story and Ch- uh, Jack Irons is is fantastic, like he could definitely do it and do it justice, and so that's also going to be my first horror comic, oh. which is uh, exciting but also intimidating, right? Because you know me, I'm a horror guy, yeah, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta and, live up to it, and right? you know <laughs> it's a big it's a, you, you, that's your genre, and you gotta fucking live is. up to it. It is. We got Jay Dalla Hala. J Dollar. What up, J Dollar Dog? Oh yeah, actually, yeah. I, uh, also, I just uh, this popped out of the Kill Journal. Speaking of uh, Preston, get that. Oh yeah, freaking fucking sweet. love it, man. Yeah, man, badass piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, super excited to be working with the people that that I'm working with. Super grateful to be working with the people that I'm working with. Wellspring of talent, right there. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Right, and and um, man. Uh, and it's so much fun. Uh, you know, if you're not having fun doing this, do something else. Because <laughs> yeah, right? if you're not having fun making comic books, something's seriously wrong. You're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, you got to, man. You have yeah, to. Man. Um, I got a question for you. What is your sure. favorite metal band? Mm. Favorite of all time? All time Fav- favorite, favorite metal band. If you consider Sabbath. Okay. No, that, I I do. I do. Right. They're like, they're like, yeah, that's like to me they're on the the the, the threshold of metal, you know what I mean? Them, Motorhead, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. I would cite those two for for me anyways, you know, as like the some of the beginners. I mean, you could and, even throw Zeppelin in there a little bit, but it was kind of, you know, and then there's there's a few others too that, you know, but for sure Sabbath. I mean, that's always it's always the go-to for everybody, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I was lucky to have like an older brother that was into Sabbath. So mm. I discovered Sabbath way early, like fifth grade, sixth grade. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I probably discovered them around then for me too. My sister was really into to metal. She kind of got me into it at a young age. Um, them and like Pantera, but then grunge kind of, it was grunge. Like a, a lot of that stuff was hitting in the 90s at that time. But yeah, yeah. Grunge replaced metal. It was Paranoid though. That was always the fucking, the album. And then and then Crazy Train kind of fucking stepped through there. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, oh, as you're a kid, you're just like, Oh, that's all one big CD, you know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You hear the the singles, you know. Yeah, fuck yeah, man, Sabbath, hell yeah. Well, I, oh, well, I remember actually bringing. Uh, we had like a little kitty party in in sixth grade in my class, yeah. and so the kids got to bring in their records and play them. Right. And so they brought in all the whack shit. Oh. Right. Damn. They brought in the whackness. <laughs> they brought in like Billy Joel, Sticks. Right. Yeah. And so I was, I brought in, um, you know, we sold our souls for rock and roll. And so, what up, world of Conan? And, um, you know, I converted those kids. I converted mm. those kids. Yeah. <laughs> They're all rocking out to it. Yeah. Yeah. They just wanted to listen to the Sabbath over and over and over again. And my teacher was a drunk. So I think he was like too loaded to, uh, to notice or care. That we were rocking devil music. When, when I was a kid, for me, it was always Iron Man because I always thought of Tony Stark, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, How oh, happy there's were a you song. When you saw the movie and, and you heard that blasting. Oh, I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it goes without saying. But then I was always just thinking, like, dude, that's a that's a comic book unto itself, a separate universe that's, a, that's Sabbath's Iron Man that could actually be a fucking comic or a movie or something like that, a video game. Oh, and yeah, it's probably the Paranoid. Of course. Paranoid was just like a catchy song, you know? You just. I really got into those two songs, you know, and then crazy train. I was like, Oh, and you're Randy Rhodes shredding on the guitar, different style, but it, you know, was Ozzy, but still, you know, those are the hits, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the singles, you know? But, and then yeah. you had the Dio, you had the Dio records, right? And oh I yeah. 
right? And uh, you know, I love. You know, I think um, you know he was fantastic when he was in um, in Rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah, right. And Rainbow to me is superior to all the bands it kind of spawned. Right. right. Rainbow's but much better than Deep Purple, I think. For instance. Right? Yeah, I'll take Rainbow over. I mean, it's just like a lot of reasons. I like his voice. It sounds really cool. And there's a lot of people that kind of sound like, um, you know, like Dio, but Dio's got like a little more like umph underneath umph. it. Yeah, a little more like I don't know, dude. He's got a little more. <laughs> it sounds heavier in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he reaches, you know, I don't mean just you know hot heights yeah. in terms of ah. Oh, I'm talking yeah. about you know soaring vocals, right? Soaring. He's loud. He projects, and then he also has like like a little like a heaviness to his voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the lower uh, tones. But yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. But as a um, kid, when he replaced Ozzy, I was like, "This is bullshit." Yeah. Fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know how you are when you when you're a kid. Uh, I'm a big and you know I think that's probably one of the reasons why when it comes to metal, I'm a goth metal guy. Mm, mm. Uh, favorite metal bands of all time, I would have to say definitely Celtic Frost. Okay, is way way up there. Uh, ridiculously, probably one of the most underrated bands ever. I would say I always said for ages that Sabbath was the most underrated band ever, but they've sort of caught up to Led Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah, they right? did. They're at, they're everywhere now. They're even. I think they're big. Yeah, well, yeah, they're even bigger. I would say probably probably like right now they're probably bigger. Um, but yeah, Zeppelin yeah, yeah. is pretty big though with the whole Thor. Like they're in a lot of movies, um, and Lord of the Rings coming back and people tying those two together. Um, yeah, I mean, you, to me, it's like cock rock. You know, I could never. You know, oh, you mean the hair or the hair, the fucking glam shit? Yeah, and just the music itself. It's just, and yeah, I can never get into Robert Plant. I don't like Robert Plant. Yeah, he's all right. Uh, I don't know, man. I like for me, I can never get into the the hair metal too much. You know what I mean? Like for me, it kind of like the the two ends. I mean, here and there, there's there might be like an all right Motley Crue song, but for the most part, it's like fucking Guns N' Roses. I I, kind of put Guns N' Roses in there, like kind of. At the end of it and at the beginning, somewhere around there, I kind of put Van Halen. Like, those are the two that I'll kind of like, you know, that's a stretch, but I'll like, all right. All right. Because, right. uh, you know, they're, Van, Van Halen is more like party metal, but his fucking guitar soloing is awesome, dude. You know, and then, the, yeah. So, oh, yeah, me, undeniably, but then you've got Diamond David Lee Roth, who is just like a clown. Yeah, he's fun, you know. You're watching Dave TV, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's a uh, Slayer, of course, big oh, yeah. Slayer fan. Slayer's fun, you know, and they're they're heavy and you know can, without a doubt, without a doubt. Nowadays, uh let's see, who do I like? I like Lacuna Coil hmm. a lot. Uh, uh Theater of Tragedy, although now they've packed in uh, you know, and um and retired. Hmm. Uh that's a, a, also a band I would consider very goth metal uh right. crematory, although they can be a little silly. And there's <laughs> nothing wrong with like hey, you know. Yeah. A little for, silliness in for your me. What metal, metal is? It's like it's like how fucking serious are you gonna get with your fucking metal and your whole outlook on the genres and subgenres of metal? You know what I mean? Yes. Like yes. how 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 fuck are you gonna like how hard are you gonna push that shit to everybody? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not metal enough. Oh, that shit's this or that. Like it's just dude, come on, have some fucking fun, bro. It's fucking yeah, music, absolutely. dude. Absolutely. Like it's fucking heavy music that like a lot of people like, dude. And, like don't don't take yourself too serious. All right. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, one band that I actually just recently discovered that I absolutely adore are the yeah. uh, Bloody Hammers. Mm, never heard of them. Oh, fantastic! So check them out. Check, check check them out. It's interesting because they're one of those bands that when people discover them, they're just like, "Why haven't I heard of you before?" Right? Right? Why yeah, am I no. just hearing this now? This is awesome, and they're kind of like a horror punk goth metal. Uh, oh, okay. Duo, a uh, husband and wife duo, and you know, just the fact that they take their uh, name from a Rocky Erickson song. Rocky Erickson was sort of like the father of like horror rock. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, his name, name is spelled R-O-K-Y for those, anybody that wants to look him up. But Rocky Erickson was the shit. And uh, this band, the, the Bloody Hammers, also, uh, some of their songs are very misfitsy. Oh, okay. Others yeah. are a little more uh, metal. Others yeah. are a little more goth. But little rock and uh, roll in there, little, little Elvis yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but fun, fun. And not mm. taking themselves, uh, 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 to, like, seriously, like, at all. I think I think like for metal for me personally because everybody has their own thing like if they're creating music I think you got to have fun with it but take it seriously but then have fucking fun with it that's why you're doing it you know what I mean well, you take it serious but because it's your passion you know but fuck dude you got to loosen up a little bit and have some fun like when you perform it 
you know, and that's that's oh, that's, that's the end goal. You should be fucking performing it if if you can. You know, mm-hmm. some people can't. Some people got to go and you know do their thing. Maybe record every now and then or jam. But that's what's about, man. Once you get in a band, you want to perform for people and put on a good fucking show if you can. You know, absolutely. So absolutely. And uh, who else is there? Um, that's all that. Those are all the only bands I like. No, that, that's that come to mind right right now. But yeah, I'm German. I got to be like a goth metal. Oh guy. yeah. I would if someone asked me that, I'd be fucking listing a bunch of shit too. You know, like keep going off. There's so many bands that I that I like. Oh too, man, man, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about Six Gun Gorilla, man, and obviously we're homies. We got our own show. We're gonna do another show, Horror Movie Club, and you know we're doing it at five today, or sorry, uh, eight o'clock. Um, EST five, when, five uh, your time, right? Yeah, I'm I'm in, I'm in fucking um, uh, Dead Fornia, and you're in Dead York um, <laughs> in New York. Yeah, yeah, New York, and um, I was wondering and. You know, I, I've, I've read all the Six Gun Gorilla books, so I can speak that they're fucking awesome. You know, some of the best uh, written comic books that I've ever Thank you. read. Um, oh, man. What Thank is there to expect from the next chapter? I know you're doing two more chapters, right? But what's going to happen? What, what, what's a little, little like, breadcrumb you could give us for the next chapter? It's the climax. Okay. okay. It's the climax. Everything has come to a head, and this is, like, the big payoff, right? Okay. Uh, in issue seven, was the big gun down. That also <laughs> was a payoff in many I love respects. That that I've been building yeah. up to right. Yeah. And then the last issue has quite a bit of action in it, but it's more plot oriented than maybe some of the previous issues. Gotcha. I always make sure not to get the story bogged down in talking heads or anything like that. Always try to. Uh, Give give the artist that I'm working with uh, something visually interesting, right? To yeah, work it makes with. it fun, fun as fuck for artists, you know. Yeah, because if your artist is having fun, guess what? It's going to come across on the page, yeah, and then you're going to have more fun reading that book. <laughs> Hell yeah! Right? Because you can tell, like, oh, you're like oh, they're, they're just digging it, right? And uh, yeah, so nine and ten are both going to be. Uh, you know, uh, wrapping this series up. So nine is going to be all action and 10 is going to be mostly uh, action. And then a denouement. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. We're, so right. It, in other words, I'm not going to stop the story cold. Yeah. It's no, going to no. be a uh, epilogue. Right. Right. No, that's, that's awesome, man. That's good yeah. to hear. I yeah, can't it, wait. I can't wait either. <laughs> I'm looking fucking... forward to it, man. I'm looking sounds forward fucking... to it. Girl, you know, uh, uh, you know, a pistol packing gorilla on a zeppelin, right? Okay, right. enough said. <laughs> oh man, oh. he's like swinging around. No ticket, no ticket. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite one, the, the Crusade. Indiana yeah, no, it's it, it's gonna be good. It, 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 it's it's it, you know, I I wrote the scripts years ago, mm-hmm. so now it's interesting coming back and uh, touching them up mm-hmm. because I'm not the writer that I was. Right. When I wrote this those. Motherf- who's this motherfucker? Right, right. Yeah, no, I I I same thing with me too. Like I don't I'm not a writer either, but I do write and I do draw and just going back and looking at certain things and I'm like, fuck. And I, sometimes you're a writer. Wanna, sometimes I want to I want to I want to change things around. Like I've already started I already wrote a script for my next book and as I'm going back and I'm putting the drawings to the page, I'm like, "Eh, do I need that? Do I need that? This, isn't that kind of wordy for this character?" Right. You know? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I got yeah. a lot of metal fucking barbarian type motherfuckers in the book. They're kind of stoic, but are they all stoic? And should they right. all be wordy, or should they some be wordy? You know what yeah. I mean. You can't have everybody just a clone fucking buff motherfucker with the with the axe and a guitar or no. whatever. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, they, and because they have people to have are personality. Different. People are different, you know. And I have to. So it, you're always constantly uh, rendering the story and characters and art. Fucking, I totally yeah. understand where you're coming from. Well, distilling it, you know, and yeah. trying to tighten it up. Uh, one of like the best. Uh, experiences I had just in terms of education was uh, one of uh, my readers said that after I, I released the second issue, he was like, That was awesome, I loved it. But in issue three, we better get to some vengeance, mm. right? It's yeah. called Long Days of Vengeance. We need to start <laughs> seeing like some mayhem, right? And I, and I was actually going to stretch it out and have that in the next issue. I was going to do more of a slow burn. Right. And then I thought about it, right? Because when our readers give us feedback, it's not like 
we're chefs and we make things to order. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh you're buying the con- Okay, I'll make it your way. No, right? Because let's face it, if comics were made that way, they'd end up, well, they are made that way now, aren't they? Marvel and DC, they're basically written by Twitter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, you got to have your own voice now to, to if, if you really want to entertain like fucking people that are normal. You know what I mean? They're into that. Yeah. Well, you know what people, I mean? People that actually read comics. Yeah. Normal comic readers. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and they're going to want to hear your distinctive vision, whether it sucks or whether it's good. You know what I mean? That just, and that obviously everything is open to interpretation and artistic taste and what people like, different strokes, different folks. But you have to be true to yourself um, when you're writing oh. the story. And, and, and that's so true. Because um, ultimately, if you're not writing the comic for yourself, I mean, you have to understand that that finished product in the end, that might be all you're left with. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do your best. And you this could be the last day on the earth that you have. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and yeah. you don't. <laughs> and, I, and I remember thinking like, OK, how am I going to approach this? And I was thinking, oh, man, I could make this really Garth Ennis. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. have him ripping off people's arms and sticking them up their asses and stuff like that. And I thought, well, why should I do Garth Ennis? Because Garth Ennis is right over there. Right. If somebody wants Garth Ennis, they could go, they could go read Garth Ennis. Well, what and I was going to say, oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, no, well, I was just going to say, I was like, I'm a do me. Yeah. You gotta do and Brian. then I succeed or fail based on my merits or lack thereof. And True. at least I could say this was mine. I did my best. It, you know, if if it, if if it's a disaster, okay, I whiffed. It wasn't good enough. But also, if at least you like it, right, right, right. Because I, one of the things I felt terrible about at the New York Comic Con, this is when I always talk about where like everybody, every book in Independence Alley was about zombies. Yeah, every yeah. single one. Yeah. So those people basically, you know, because it was all about The Walking Dead that year. I still have my pa- my, uh, <laughs> my pass, yeah. and it has like The Walking Dead on it, right? Right. And those people made a comic book for an audience that doesn't exist. And they're stuck with that. And I remember thinking, like, damn, those people are probably stuck with a comic book that even they don't want to read. They even mm. they don't like. Well, dude, I I read like back when it came out, right? We used to watch it, me and the wife, and uh, it was every week. And then we go over to mom's house, and they'd watch it over there. Everybody fucking watched Walking Dead on Sunday night. Um, and I liked it too. And then I just came across an article about Dead World, and I was just like, dude, there was a lot of swipes that were oh, yeah taken from Dead World, dude. I think there was even like a samurai chick. There was a dude oh, like yeah. in an RV. You know what I mean? And then I was yeah. looking into Dead World. I haven't picked up any of the Dead World stuff, but for me, it's like that's like. Walking Dead on fucking metal. Um, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, it, there's, yeah. there's like the the zombie like leader dude, the the, the biker zombie leader That's guy. The zombies are in control. They the know they have king, yeah. the, the zombie king. They have fucking te- they have a uh, they have stargates that go to hell with different yeah. deadites. So you got that evil dead feel to it as well. Yes. Then you got he's a fucking biker. Um, yeah. Then on top of that, there's human farms. They're they're breeding humans. Like to me, to me that is more interesting. It's more fantastic in some ways. Yeah, um, this one's more realistic. Like this is what would happen. This is thirty eight. You know, this is zombie World War Z. This is you know, um, you know the the fucking one that Cillian Murphy did, the Danny Boyle one. Uh, twenty eight days later. Right. This is that. Well, those are those are what would happen in real life. For me, I don't give a fuck about that. I know that shit's gonna happen already. Exactly. I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what Walking Dead ultimately is, and a lot of people miss this. It's Robert Kirkman, and I don't mean this even as a diss, right? It's Robert Kirkman doing Stephen King doing George Romero zombies. Mm, that makes sense. Right? When you put and look it that at way. the characters and everything. It's so Stephen King. And yeah. I loved, you know, and, you know, I liked the comic. I liked, yeah. not loved. Liked the comic. I loved the first uh, season of say. the TV show. I like the first three seasons. I like the the one with the a lot of people hate the governor, and I kind of hated the visual look. But he looked like Sex Machine from 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 Dusk Till Dawn. He looked like Tom Savini. That's how he looked in the book. So I was kind of expecting that. But yeah. what we got was kind of like this Liam Neeson type character with a fucking Southern draw, Dude, which was cool. Which was cool. It was much better, I thought. I thought, and I liked that one. He version. was my favorite. He, he was my favorite character of the whole show. Yeah, yeah. But I liked the uh, the Tony Moore art from the first six issues. Oh yeah. What, and he and he was at that time, uh, he was doing Venom. 
with Rick Remender. Um, fucking Agent Venom. That shit was so good. He was a yeah. a para, you know paralyzed alcoholic with a you know daddy issues. It, it was just yeah, really yeah. good and well drawn. But anyways, yeah. I'm, I'm I love Rick Remender too. And you know me, I'm like a black and white stan. So yeah, me too. <laughs> so, I mean, for horror, it's perfect, dude. You know, it is. Um, it is. And so it was like a black and white zombie comic. Okay, I, I'll check that out for sure. Right. Uh, then, of course, I think it suffered from the fact that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kirkman ha- wasn't planning ahead. He wasn't plotting. Right. He was just freestyling every issue. He was. Um, but that was the point. He said in the very first issue, I don't know where this is going. This right. is kind of like an experiment. But yeah. then Frank Darabont bought, bought the rights. And then Shawshank boom. Redemption, Frank Darabont, the mist. Yeah. Frank Darabont, who, by the way, was at that convention. I walked right freaking past him. I knew who he was. I don't think anybody else there did. Hmm. I recognized him, and I, I'm still kicking myself in the ass for not having walked around with copies of my comic, right? That, and been like, oh, hey, hey, Frank, what's up? Free comic. Go. Well, you I was going to say, too, man, like about about your character, uh, I always forget his, his name, the, the Kumba. African, Kumba. About yes. Kumba is you're comparing it to well if I do fucking you know uh, the style of um, Garth Ennis you know he's sticking the arms up people's asses ripping arms off shit like that that's cool and I'm I, I you know that's kind of like my style and stuff like that but Wait. with with yours I'm always questioning is Kumba a real is this can this exist is this a gorilla fucking real and in the whole story I was like this is a real dude man like this is a real gorilla well it's really that- realistic in that time is it possible and I'm always thinking yeah it kind of is in certain ways and he and for me that's scarier but it's also more heartwarming too once he's going to the church and yeah. finding out his mission um to me he felt like a real a real gorilla that was on the um edge of uh or on the spectrum of becoming that much more than what an average gorilla was but in that time you know yeah uh, so he's a, he's a, for me he's a really believable um humanoid <laughs> you know character. A, a lot of people say that and that always means a lot to me uh, because needless to say, he was a challenge to write. Oh, yeah. At, I at fucking first. can only imagine. Yeah. And I was like, well, is he going to talk? I'm like, no, he's a freaking gorilla. Right. He's not going right. to. No, he's not going to be talking. Right. Take you, take you out real quick. If he started uh, talking that quick, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, how is he going to communicate? I was like sign language. Yeah. Right. Now, it's go- not going to be like the sign language that Coco the gorilla uses. But he's right. growing up with a human sister. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And you know how, like, even twins will have, like, their own sort of, like, secret secret language? Shorthand, yeah. Right? So they're going to find a way to communicate. And there's you know, different, you know, there's sign language that's very simple, right? Like, if I go, you go that way. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or, okay, or thumbs. Oh, wait, this is this is, like... Uh, forbidden now. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right. But these are, they're all uh, right. <laughs> this is, this is peace uh, in the United States. This is F you <laughs> <laughs> across the pond yeah, right. in England. Right. Um, so we all use sign language and there's no reason why somebody wouldn't be able to understand some very basic sign language, you know, or I could have him like, uh, writing something in the dirt. Yep. Right. And once I figured that out, then it was just like smooth, smooth, smooth sailing, smooth sailing. Man. Smooth sailing. And it's it, it and it always works. And for me, I always thought, um, it, like back when I had Disney, there was a movie with Brian Cranston that they put out, and uh, it was from the gorilla's perspective. It was a true story about how a gorilla was raised in um, in like this farm, like in this mall, like a uh, zoo show. You know, I think it was called like my I forgot the name of it. My name really? is Jojo or something, but it's a true story. And the, the, the gorilla, they finally let him go. And he's like in a preserve in Africa somewhere or something like that. Aww. But Sam Wilson is the gorilla. So you could see him talking. He's talking to the elephant. She's dying. Brian Cranston is like the um, ringleader and he owns the, sh- the, the little attraction. It's a, it was a great movie. It was a tearjerker. And I oh, just kept man. thinking about um, Six Gun Gorilla um, after reading it. But also when I was reading Six Gun Gorilla, I was always thinking about Congo. I fucking love that movie Congo growing up. It's fucking the it's underrated. It's well, I love the gorillas at the end, dude. I love those gorillas. It's got Bruce Campbell. 
I love those gorillas at the end, though. They're the fucking guard dogs, and they're brutal and scary, and they're just yes. they're horrifying. You could have done a lot with that movie. You could have done even more, but it's got that more Indiana Jonesy and feel to the movie, which I, I always think is kind of cool. But it's not it, 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 the adventure, like the Mummy and shit like that. I love those adventure hey. horror, horror movies. I even like well, Jungle Cruise a little bit. Um, well, I mean, the original novel Congo, it's more obviously a pulp novel, mm, right? Okay. Um, Michael Crichton was very much a pulp guy. Yeah, and uh, Eaters of the Dead, which was turned into uh, the Thirteenth Warrior. Warrior. Yeah, metal is fun. Which is a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I wish they'd stressed the fact that it was this was supposed to be Beowulf, the true story. Right. But you know, it's still a fun. It's still a fun Viking movie. Uh, yeah. That's more. That's when you read it, you're just like, oh, this is like this is just like a straight up pulp novel. Right? right, and this guy loves Robert E. Howard. It's obvious. He even gives, I think, he even like dedicates it to Howard and like Lovecraft and a couple other people. And yeah, yeah. or I might be thinking of, thinking of a different book. And Congo was the same thing, right? Because that's from the genre of uh, like um, King Solomon's Mines, mm, right? Right, and the Alan yeah. Quatermain stories, exactly. Where somebody's finding a lost city in Africa, and that's where and that Jones is a lost got that city shit. of Zinge. Zinge, yeah. So if you're not familiar with that genre and you walk into it, you might be like, what? But if you're familiar with it, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. I love that shit, dude. That shit's yeah, awesome. I do, too. You know I do, I mean? too. And that's dude, where Indiana Jones. the core. Yeah. Yeah, it's dope, dude. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I love me some Tarzan. And that's ultimately what Six Gun Gorilla is. It's 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 Tarzan in reverse. Instead of, yep. I'm always amazed that people miss this, too. I feel like I got away with murder here. Right? I'm always waiting for somebody to be like, man, that's just Tarzan in reverse. But like only <laughs> one person has gotten that so far. No, I, I totally get it, dude. It's fucking awesome. I wanted to, to share the campaign real quick if we can. Yeah, I want to uh, check it out. It's on a new, uh, a pretty new um crowdfunding site yeah. um, called Zoop. You want to talk that about is. that real quick while I pull it up? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I always feel like I can never give much back to the, to the, to the community because my artist friends can, you know, somebody's campaign is struggling. They can bust a, uh, a, a variant cover. They can bust some sketch cards or something like that. Uh, what am I going to do? Write people a paragraph? So right. what I like to do is, you know, just uh, little experiments, right? Like I did with Kickstarter where I was like, okay, let me just like throw my book up on Kickstarter, do zero promotion. And that way we'll find out how many customers I got just from people stumbling across it. And it ended up doing pretty well. Like all, all things considered, I ended up making three grand. Okay, that's information I can pass on to my homies. Uh, Zoop, a lot of us have been looking at Zoop from afar and kind of going, mm, I don't right. know about this. So I was just like, all right, fuck it. I'll be the first one in and we'll see what happens. And then I can report back and let people know uh, what my experience was like. Um, Zoop is uh, different from um, uh, uh, Kickstarter and uh, Indiegogo and other crowdfunding platforms in the sense that it is exclusively for indie comics. That sounds like a match made in heaven, bro. It does, doesn't it? And most of the people who are going to the Kickstarter. Most of the people who are going to Indiegogo, they're not looking for comic books. They're right. looking for gadgets. They're looking for um, I don't know, cat furniture. They're looking for they're looking for anything but what we're doing, right? It's a really teeny tiny percentage. So I, I was thinking, well, damn, that's a great idea. Everybody that's gonna go here is looking for indie comics. All right then. And um we need uh more crowdfunding platforms, we need more options. Especially, I, I thought this was a really kind of a freaky coinky dink that when I launched my campaign, that was around the time that uh, we discovered that um, that Indiegogo is shadow banning our campaigns. Mm. And, you know, I, I keep trying to explain to people, Indiegogo is not our friend. Kickstarter is not our friend. YouTube is not our friend. Right, Twitter is not our friend. These are platforms that we use to build our brands, and to have one more platform 
can only be a good thing. And uh, and so some people were all were, were immediately pissed off, like and like mad, because I think I guess maybe they're like they feel loyal to Indiegogo for some reason, like you, you traitor. And then there was the Camilla Zong thing. Uh, she's like some SJW that works there. And she's not even like one of the founders or anything like that. Uh, but they hired her at some point. I don't even know if she's still there. I don't even know who this bitch is, to be perfectly honest, aside from the fact that from what people have mentioned, right? Right. And so they're like, well, I'm not backing your campaign because she works there. Like, mm cleaning toilets or something right? right and i'm just like well you know if you're not gonna buy my book you know i understand that's your um you know that's your prerogative that's cool but don't not buy it because like there's somebody that works there <laughs> that you don't like right didn't make any didn't make any sense to me well you got two days left man so yeah if you guys if you guys were on the fence about backing um six gun gorilla because you're waiting for the omnibus it's fucking here um, it's on Zoop and only takes like maybe three minutes to make an account. I did it already for the um, Axe Wilder John campaign. I'm yeah. comics gay to the core. And uh, that dude's not comics gay, but he's cool with it or whatever. Um, I bought that book. I thought it looked cool. So I fucking did it. And um, uh, it looks like they're going to be fulfilling it too pretty soon. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah, I know Brian's going to fulfill it. He's fulfilled what, uh, five campaigns already. Yep. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. So we have two days left on here. Let's see if we can get this bad boy to 10 G's. Um, come and check it out. We only have five more to hit. It's doable. We can do this. Um, Brian, do you want to go over the tiers a little bit, bro? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, the first one is the digital edition because I know some people are very anti having a digital tier. I'm very pro because there are some folks that just want to read the book, but they don't want to pay $30 for shipping and handling. And which is incredibly understandable um i've not backed book books because of that reason right uh, and as creators we don't like charging people 30 dollars sh shipping and handling so if somebody just wants the digital copy that's fine i also let people know that you know if they want to pirate it that's totally cool that when you get a uh pdf from me it belongs to you so then you can like, I don't see it any different as making uh, a copy of a CD or something like that for a friend. Right. right? Someone else hears it and then might go out and buy it later or something, or at least speak, speak uh, kindly or fondly of your works, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, Marvel and DC are like, you know, uh, piracy is killing us. No, it's not. Yeah, the only so people it's... that are pirating your comics are people that weren't going to buy them in the first place. Yeah. To make reviews on how fucking stupid they are. Yes. Pretty much. Yep. And then there's the $50 tier, and that's that's the big kahuna right there. That's the one I got. That's the big the big uh catch me up and everything all in one. It's going to be the entire first eight issues, which are right. So the book is already 80% finished. Right. And uh if this funds, then we're gonna add uh issues nine and ten. Because I couldn't run a campaign for issues nine and ten because I already, with issues seven and eight, had people saying, "Oh yeah, I'll just wait for the next trade paperback." Right. Because right. my first campaign was a trade paperback containing the first six issues. Uh, also, for those people that already have the first trade paperback, there's going to be a second trade paperback. There's going to be a volume two. Because there's no way I would want to double dip, and there's no way that I expect people to buy back a book that already has issues that they already have. Oh, Although cool. save omnibus, a couple bucks, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Although I think for the omnibus edition, I'm going to be making certain little little changes right. here and there. That's cool, man. But you get the entirety, like the, the 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 way you want it, the way Brian wants it, you know. And I, I think it's the first omnibus in CG. It um, is. And it's 200 and fucking uh, 24 pages long. Um, Minimum. I, that's going to be the biggest, baddest CG book um, out so far if you guys buy it. Hopefully it gets funded on here. And you got the floppy pack right here, 90 bucks. It's That's fucking awesome, dude. To be honest, I'd like, man, it, it, it was really cool to have the floppies. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's cool to burn through the book too, but then it's also cool to like break it down and pick one up at a time. All these uh, individual issues are, are number one through eight plus the premiere issues of nine and ten. The epic uh, final two issues of the, the the saga. Yep, 
Yep. So you're gonna get you 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 have a choice. If you're a trade paperback person, you can get the trade paperback for fifty bucks. If you're a floppy person, you can get uh, all ten floppies for uh, for ninety. And then so. of course there's the um, there's the combo pack, which is the floppies plus the uh, omnibus edition. So that way, if you're a collector. And you don't want to read the floppies. You want them to be like 9.5 and put them in like a, a, a hermetically sealed uh, a, 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 um, Mylar snug with, you know, and all that shit. Acid-free back, backing board. That's cool. Uh, and then you have the trade paperback. And then if you just want to like read that, you know, and wrinkle the pages or whatever, or the cover. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can do that. Uh, and if you're going to buy both the floppies, the same story, uh, uh, you know, as uh, the floppies and the, uh, omnibus, I got to throw something in there. So there's going to be a 6 a.m. sticker because it's Ooh, not a CJM. It's, yeah. it's not a, a CG campaign without a 6 a.m. sticker. Let's face right. it. Right. Oh yeah. No one puts anybody that doesn't have one. Right. But I'm just keeps in it real. I got two myself. Yeah, you do, and they're badass. And let's see. And you get a fucking poster too, right here. Uh, wanted poster, right? Yep. Yeah, and there's also it's also going to come with a uh, exclusive um, um, uh, a wanted poster that's going to be exclusive to this campaign and this tier. That's dope. So, yeah. Damn. And if. Uh, you know, they want to build a bar in my house with a, like a saloon and fucking put all these wanted posters up with these CG Western books we got. Oh I'm man, fucking fucking badass, man! It's you know I love Western comics. I always have, and I've always loved westerns. And it's great seeing all of these Western comics, right? right. And seeing all of these weird Western comics. Those are my favorite, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now I'm breaking away from the Western for a couple years, you know, but I'm gonna come back. Like it's it's ultimately gonna happen, you know. Well, I mean, because, you know, it's a genre that's limitless. You can, yeah. You're can never going to run out of stories. Yeah, it's it's basically like the um, the uh, post-apocalyptic. It's very similar to that, you know. I've gotten into debates with people about that. No, it's not. It didn't happen in the apocalypse. I know that, motherfucker. Look, but it's the same thing. It, it, so there's up. something <laughs> apocalyptic about the Italian Westerns, especially exactly. the Sergio Leone films. Those do right. not feel like they take place in the real world. They feel like they take place in purgatory. Yeah. Or so desolate and just the, the, the fucking survival uh, yeah. aspect of it. And, then... and, 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 and nobody is safe. They will murder right. kids. They will <laughs> yes. murder uh, beautiful young women. They will murder priests. Resources. Nobody is safe. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, like, and it's you know. not the it, 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 it bears no resemblance to the real old west at all, right? Because right. it was nothing like that. And uh even in the good, the bad, and the ugly, they're fighting the civil war <laughs> in Texas. Right. <laughs> the civil That's war, funny. and I make a, a point of pointing that out actually in the first issue of Six Gun. One of the reasons why they're hanging out in Texas is because the civil war is going going on north to them and they want to stay the hell away from that nonsense mm -hmm. right but with the Sergio Leone films yeah it's you're you're not it, I, I like what Martin Scorsese said where he's just like I don't understand why people seem to think that films are supposed to be like accurate reflections of the real world right right uh, he, I, I agree 100 percent then you got 20 on here you got for 20 bones you get issues nine and ten yeah so if you already got the uh, first eight you can just pick those up real quick Yep. And then you got the other tier right here, Six Gun Gorilla, Long Days of Vengeance, Volume 2, Trade Paperback. Um, yes. And that's, I think I have, no, I don't have that one. I had the one before that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, OG, so like, like I said, tiers. no double dipping. Double dipping. We got the, uh, the the trailer here. Would you like to watch it? Sure, why not? Let's, let's take although, a look at it. Yeah, although, although I'm going to have to stop my camera because there's no way I'm watching myself watching my own trailer. Let's do it. all heard the stories. We all heard the legends. Wyatt Earp, Doc, Doc Holliday, Holliday, Billy the Billy Kid. Kid. <laughs> but there's a secret history to the Old West. One that seems too strange to be true, but well, we all know what they say about the truth. Oh, my God. 
finally ready to hear the story of the strangest, the most startling western hero of them all. Six-Gun Gorilla. Long days of vengeance. Hell yeah, bro. And uh, all of the gunshots that you hear in that are taken directly from Sergio Leone movies. I love that, man. It's one of those things where it's just like, well, people aren't going to notice it, but I'm like, I'm going to know it's I'm going to know it's there. You know, it's like a lingerie. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That, oh, God. Um, the uh, love it, man. The fellow that put that together for me did a uh, did a did a beautiful job and. It was the easiest thing ever to storyboard because all I had to do was just cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, and then just draw little arrows. <laughs> Can you make this move that way? This move that way, and and all that, and all that. It turned out, it turned out real good. Yeah, it looks awesome, man. You guys yeah. did a little creative uh, back and forth right there, huh? Those, oh yeah, those. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. I was gonna ask you, what's your favorite movie? Oh wow, that changes. That changes, doesn't it? <laughs> uh in the top rotation i would say my favorite movie is probably bride of frankenstein mm, no shit um, all time your favorite movie is bride of yeah, frankenstein yeah wow. i think it's bride of frankenstein uh it's one of those films that i think was blessed by the gods of cinema <laughs> right like or some kind of like fairies just like went flying through and like sprinkled a little magic pixie dust on it uh, La Bella La Bette, uh, the um, Cocteau uh, uh, version of uh, Beauty and the Beast. That's also a favorite. The, uh, that's definitely one of those movies. And then, of course, there's the Sergio Leone films, the Dollars Trilogy, Once Upon a Time in the West, uh, Carpenter, uh, <laughs> Escape from New York, The Thing. Uh, boy. All right, yeah. you don't have one, huh? You can't oh, oh then, of course. And then, of course... The Romero films, Night, Dawn, and Day. Actually, Dawn might might also might might. Well, once again, it's just like they jockey around for position, <laughs> right? What which yeah. movie have I watched the most times? Probably Night and Dawn. Mm. And in many respects, I think Dawn actually might be in the number one spot. To be perfect, yeah, Dawn's pretty gangster, dude. That yeah, was it is. that was uh, that was the one that I always watched as a kid. Then I um. I don't know. Then I then I stumbled across the Return of the Living Dead, and I was like, "Yeah, that movie's pretty badass." That was that was always my favorite um, zombie movie. But for a while, it was uh, what was it? It was Land of the Dead. I like that one a lot. Everybody hates that one, and um, I really I liked hate it. Them. I don't hate yeah, it. I, I just it. think that it's um, I don't know. It's 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 very very flawed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there's also um, fuck, dude, it's the uh, remake by Tom Savini of Night of the Living Dead. For, oh, I saw yeah, that one first. Night. Saw yeah. in the theater, bro. Saw oh, that really? in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, man. the only reason why I even gave it a chance was because it was uh, produced and written by Romero. Mm, yeah. And one of, the, one of the reasons I loved it was because it assumed that you already knew Night of the Living Dead inside right. and out. Right. And so, you know, it would take these sharp left turns when you were expected to turn right. <laughs> I was like, oh, ah, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, I like that movie a lot. And time's been very kind to it, too. It sucks that, you know, it, it came out when they weren't preserving all of the gore that they cut out, you know, and thinking like, oh, well, we'll put the, this will be on the director's cut. This will be on the extended edition. So we lost all those like sweet headshots and everything. Because, of course, they had to tone down the gore for an R rating. Yeah, yeah, that always sucks. 
Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. What's this? But, your fistful of dynamite. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes, World of Conan, Fistful of Dynamite, very underrated Leone movie that always gets left out. Fantastic movie with James Corbett. Yes, it is. But it's not one of my favorites. <laughs> I still think it's lesser than the Dollars Trilogy and uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Mm. But it is a great movie. I mean, look, when it comes to like the, to the Italian Westerns, I am always, always tell people, start with the Sergios. Watch everything by Sergio Leone. Watch everything by Sergio Corbucci, and everything by Sergio Salima, and you'll be you'll be I. The surges, the, the surges, surgical, yeah, yeah, yeah. The surgical procedure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. On the western, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yep, yep. Like um, Sergio Corbucci, of course, he did Django, and um, the original Django, and also uh, the Great Silences, which I think is probably the best non Leone spaghetti western. Damn, man. I was I was noticing too on the on the um the art of uh, the new uh, Six Gun Gorilla the last one you had a new artist it was Preston Azevedo. Yes. Um, we talked about this before. Um, he's the, the way you took was for the artistic approach of the line art was pencil. Yep. And you had um uh, Oliver um the Ace or from uh, Six Five Six he he's doing the colors on there to really bring out the uh to really bring bring out the pencils. I wanted to show that real quick. Oh my um, god. Before um, before I forget. By the way, hail six five six and um, get on the new um, Cryptidinals campaign when that drops. I don't think I don't think that's dropped yet. But if you, that, have, that, if you, if you haven't backed the Cryptidinals, back that shit now. I think the, I think there's still in demand on Indiegogo. You do need that book, right? Without a um, doubt. I was going to show you, I, and I really liked it too, man. I really love pencils that are painted. Some people aren't a big fan of pencils uh, scanned and then put into their comics but i love it like eric powell does it all the fucking time oh. he even he even goes harder than this on there he actually like scans the pencils like in here it's a little darker you, you know what i'm talking about yeah 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 because like, check uh, out all of his work you know what i mean just ink wash check out yep. fuck dude all, all the goon stuff there's he uses um even black colored pencil black yeah. colored pencil regular fucking scratchy pencil so, yep yeah no yep. it's it's a different effect dude you know what i mean and this Looks beautiful, man. I, I I can't wait to see what he does for the next stuff. Right now, he's doing the uh, artwork for um, Literature Devil's new book. Yeah, uh, that looks really good too. Yeah, uh, I believe the colors are by Oliver as well. So I'm checking that out. Well, yeah, you. because you see how this turned out. I originally, uh, you know, Preston and I agreed because, you know, I look at his pencils and I'm just like, can we just release it like this? Can we just publish? Yeah this because they're so right. beautiful i don't want to see them inked i don't want to see them colored right right and i was even thinking about, but then he was like you know what i'll ink quote unquote with my pencil yeah and yeah, then totally. if you want to you know if you want to if you want the right person to uh color your artist pencils ask them yeah let them pick the person right well obviously and, literature devil liked it i'm sure that's the same route they're taking uh, I'm pretty sure it is. You know what I mean, dude, dude, dude. You'd be a fool if you know if you didn't, because Ollie's colors are gorgeous, and he preserved every single line of Preston's beautiful uh, uh, pencil work. Fantastic! Yeah. I couldn't have asked for better. Couldn't have asked yeah. for better. It gives it that fucking really like scratchy, gritty, punky fucking metal like. look, look to it. That's so, that's what they call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I when I read a, when I look at comic book art, not that I don't like people like George Perez. For instance, who we were very yeah. neat and very clean. I yeah. like to look when I'm looking at an illustration. I like to be reminded that I'm looking at an illustration. I like yeah. to see the human hand, so right. to speak. Yeah. Well, like uh, you know, they have the new AI art now. I think that's that'd be cool for for writers. Me, I think it's fucking it's horrible, but it's cool for writers or someone that wants to bang out a story and get the shit in there. It's... I'm not a fan of it. I'm I'm totally like 100. Like you know, people people need to have their own you know, views on things. And I respect that. And me, I don't like it. Um, it's also going to get better too. It's going to get to the point infancy. where you do not need an artist whatsoever. I mean, people yeah, are gonna, I that's obviously bullshit. people are always going to want an artist. Never. People yeah. are going to always want an artist and no, no, it's no. going to be work, but the they're going to get so fucking good to where yeah. you're not even going to need an artist anymore. That's how I, I disagree. I disagree. I disagree completely because there's going to be something missing. There's always going to be something missing because I don't I'm think a, so. It's, these things are I, I i believe these things are alive bro these computers are alive there's fucking i believe that there's there's fucking uh spirits in there dude and that to me that's part souls. of the singularity yeah and now there's even even fucking demons in there like like tulpas and shit you see that shit the other day on 656 oh my the god one they put into there dude it's just in the beta Spook. testing 
fucking point Squeaky. right now. Imagine yeah. in six months. Imagine in a year how fucking good it's going to be. Like I've seen so many, they fuck the hands up. That's usually what it is. They don't they don't nail the hands right. The hands are usually put on backwards. The machine, the AI, it puts hands on backwards and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I'm just I, saying, dude. Like pe- people, there's always gonna. We're, you're not gonna need an artist. I mean, uh, personally, that's what I'm thinking in like probably ten I, years or so. I just you're gonna yeah. want one though. But that's just I, me. I, I, I'm not for it. But that's yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, um, I don't think that AI art. Like I, like I said, I find it fascinating. RJ, for instance, yeah. Hail RJ. He, no, it's uh, beautiful, little, bro. It's fucking awesome. That's the like, Gun Gorilla thing that he did, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like, yo, like that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. So I think AI art is interesting. I think it's, it's obviously in its infancy, but you're right. n- but you're never going to be able to replace real artists. And uh, it's kind of like the people who say that ah, if you put a bunch of monkeys in a room and have them all banging on t- typewriters, eventually they'll create the complete works of William Shakespeare. Bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit, right, on no. that, certainly. Uh, and I think that it's the same thing with art because I think that you uh, – I do believe that you need a soul there. I do believe well, that – have you ever uh, seen a, a monkey – like have you ever seen a group of monkeys put together artwork like that? No, I have seen. Well, I have seen. Well, I mean, look, I do. I look, I got a painting upstairs. <laughs> they do paint, Coco they do paint, they, they do paint, paint but they're but not drawing like, comic books and they're not building bridges and uh, skyscrapers. They're shit, building you know? worlds with these things, dude. Like, it's 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 getting to that point, dude. Like, you're, you're only okay. gonna need to ask for one one frame, one one panel at a time, dude. You know what I mean? You could be right. I could be like, wrong. Give me some, give me some, uh, give me some McFarlane mixed with, um, you know, a little bit of uh, Simon Bisley. Um, give me a, a Viking, um, you know, you know, a Viking, you know, something. You know what I mean? And then it'll, it'll like well, spit it out. You know what I mean? The only the riding thing, riding a tricycle or something, and then boom, it's it's got it. You know. The one thing that excites me was is the idea of um, doing like computer animated, like they were going to do a computer animated movie that was going to be like. Uh, I think a uh, uh, sequel to Bride of Frankenstein that was going to have the Wolfman in it, right? Mm. And they were going to cast Boris Karloff and Lon Chaney <laughs> Jr. and all these right. other actors. With deep fakes and stuff? With deep fakes. Yeah. Now that, I think, is possible. And I would watch the shit out of that. I would watch it. It's a little morbid, but I would still watch it. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I actually well, think it's kind of beautiful. I actually think it's kind of like... Um, keeping them alive in yeah, a way right for sure <laughs> right I, I don't see it as like grave robbery i can understand why somebody would though i know? i do i think it's grave robbery per, but personally that's just me i mean like unless they signed off on it like yeah dude what about deep fucking... fake what about deep fake charles bronson he but he's a, are you talking about the dude over on the east the, over on the fucking yeah yeah, yeah. i'm forgetting his name right now the, uh, the what is he russia or ukraine or something like that i think he's i forget I think he might, be, I think he might be like Yugoslavian or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, or Latvian, or I have no, I have no idea. Uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, that's the oh, that's some funny shit, man. But I mean, it gets to the point to where like you've been you've been dead for so fucking long that it's like you're kind of your face is kind of public domain at that point. I in some in some degree, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it is kind of morbid, but then again, you know what? It's been so many years, dude. It's like fuck, man. You know what I mean? You're you're mm-hmm. you're part of the public domain now. Like like that whole square headed Frankenstein and the bride of Frankenstein with the big lightning bolts on the side of her head, like her hair. It's, I don't know, man, it's iconic. You know, it's an iconic yeah. class. Both of them are, they, you have to start from that before you, before you build from anything else, or at least mm-hmm. acknowledge it from, from there. You know, if you're going to come in and all right, what am I, how am I going to make my Frankenstein look different? You'd probably look at that and then you would read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and then you would compile stuff. And then you'd probably come across different comic books and other movies, some hammer, you know, little well, Kenneth Bronner. Well, I mean, like, uh, I read a screenplay that was written by Kurt Siodmak, who wrote a lot of Universal monster movies, including yeah. The Wolfman. And he was, uh, he, it was a script for uh, Dracula versus The Wolfman. Mm, and it was okay. excellent. And mm. so that never was filmed. Well, you know, that's the sort of thing I would love to see somebody do uh, with, uh, with computers or computer animation. Uh, although I think com- com- combining that with the with live action, like they did it with uh, Peter Cushing in Rogue One, it's it's a, it's the uncanny Kenny Valley thing. And then I saw the actor that they used; he looked enough like him. Just 
why didn't they just, you know, that was, it was almost enough of a deep fake just using that if they just used that guy. So I think you got another backer, Brian. Did I? Were you at 92? I think so. You're at 93 now. Oh, nice. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. So thank you, whoever's watching. You're fucking awesome. Thanks yes, for, for backing. If you can yeah, share it out, let people know. Um, that'd be cool too. You don't got to, yeah. but you know, it's, I, I always like to do that personally. Um, helps build the hype machine, you know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Brian, I yeah, gotta ask you another question, man. What's uh what's your favorite beer? I mean, you be you know, you being German and all, you know, this, oh, it's God. either gonna be an easy one or a hard one. Oh, my favorite beer. Well, once again, it like because I'm not because I because you know, once I got on the right psych meds, my al- appetite for alcohol just like disappeared. Well, I seen you with some bomb ass what Eradura or Ornitos the other day, right? For uh, oh for yeah, Tommy Marks yeah, close yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I, the, yeah, I mean, I'll have. I, that doesn't mean I I, 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 I don't get drunk, but I'll still have a have a drink, right? Yeah, yeah. And totally. uh, that's how I am now, dude. I just drink like, you know, I like Varsteiner. I love like yeah. Varsteiner. Yeah. I like uh, Stella Trois. Mm, mm, okay. I like uh, shit, man. Even like some of the American stuff, you know, right. like Sam, Sam Adams Cherry Wheat, and you know, I'm I drinking mean, this um this this mind uh. Mine haze right now by fucking Firestone Walker. It's like a double. Nice. It's like an eight point three. I never had it before. I figured I'd pick it nice. up. I've been drinking Mickey's the last two, so I figured hey, I'll pick one up for this stream and one for the horror uh, show we're going to be doing in about an hour or so. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I watch me some, you know. So if you guys want, you could check out check us out on Horror Movie Club, Comic Skate Horror Movie Club. We do that every week on Brian's channel. We 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 normally do it at four um, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're doing yeah, it yeah. at 8, 8 p.m. tonight and going forward, or is that just tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that way it's going to uh, give us an hour to get something mm. to eat. Smart. And, and it's prime time, baby. 8 o'clock. And, and, so. and it's, and it's prime, so prime time, and it works out with uh, with the Madness, with the Madness Network. So Cool, cool. Yeah, give us a little break, too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you so much for having work. me, brother, man. For sure, man. For sure. And uh, if you guys want, uh, we're, you can check us out there. Um, we, we're doing Terrifier 1. Uh, terrifier and we'll be talking about that a little bit tonight and um you know brian's campaign man brian's been around for 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 a minute he's um been fulfilling like a fucking machine he's been writing like a machine you guys don't know about all of all the stuff that he's been doing but he's got a lot of stuff that's going to explode um before you know it this book won't get if this book doesn't get funded it will come out eventually i guarantee you because it's so fucking good so if you can try to come and get it right now all right yeah, you'd, really you'd be doing it. homie a, a favor for sure yeah, Brian's a homie, solid dude. You know, he gets down. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about your book, Brian? Uh, check it out. Check it out. Uh, if you uh, like the previous issues, you know, I should add uh, a, um, you know what? If you haven't read the book and you'd like to just re- read the first issue for free, uh, Email me, hit me up on uh, the on the Twitter or Damn. whatever, and I'll email it to you because wow. that gives you a chance to then kick the tires and make sure that this is something that you want to read. But if I could offer a, a money back guarantee, I absolutely would because, and I don't say say this to boast, everybody loves this book. And yeah, no, it's everybody loves it, dude. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? I figured some people would really love it, but I didn't think everybody would get off on it. Everybody seems to get a kick out of it. So check it out. For sure, man. And I, I also put the uh, the link in the bottom of the chat. Thanks for everybody that showed up today. I really appreciate it. This is my pilot episode. First time StreamYard. Or I'm yeah. sorry, streaming on StreamYard. And uh, I've been fucking making comics and being on shows and uh, reviewing stuff too So for, for a few years now. So some of you guys know who I am. Some of you don't. But thank you. Um, and as always, folks, thanks for watching. If you like metal, you like movies, you like brewskis, stop on by. Thanks for watching. Be bold and be and be brave. And remember, roll the bones to know your role. You guys have a great day. Bye. Peace.